All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Firefighter Robert Vera. I'm gonna be doing a presentation today to show you guys a little bit of information about the 18-inch uh, steel chainsaw. I'm gonna walk you through a morning checkout and kinda explain to you what it is that you look for in the chainsaw when, uh, when you're doing the morning checkout, how to recognize the parts of the chainsaw that you need to be familiar with to know if they're working correctly and uh, if they're ready for service for the day. So we'll get right through it. Uh, one of the first things you want to look at on the right hand side of the chainsaw is you got the two main bolts that hold the chain bar. You have the chain here that goes around the chain bar. You want to see that it's lubed and it has grease, uh, oil from the oil tank. Um, here you got the bar, the, the, bar, the plastic that protects your hand while you're holding the chainsaw. On this side, we're going to look at the left side of the chainsaw. You have the pull cord on this side. This is the whole mechanism that starts the chainsaw. Here you have uh, the fuel tank and on this side the oil bar uh, uh, tank where you fill it with oil that keeps the oil bar uh, looped. So we'll start on the chain. The chain goes around the chain bar here. You'll get identification markers on the chain bar that shows uh, the, the length of the chain bar, the type of chain that it takes uh, to go around it and uh, this way that you're able to match it up with the correct chain that, that's made to uh, work with the chain with the chainsaw. Um, we'll look at this side here. This is where you adjust the chain. When you wanna see if the chain slides across the chain bar correctly, that it slides smoothly, there's no debris in there. If you had to adjust this to tighten it or, uh, or, um, or loosen it, if you felt it was too tight, you would loosen these two main nuts. And then in the center, there's a screw that you would use to turn clockwise to uh, extend it or counterclockwise to collapse it. So these are the two uh, main uh, nuts that we explained. You would loosen these uh, by breaking them loose a little bit. This would allow you to, uh, to make adjustments to the chain bar. And then by tightening it back would allow you to then be able to use the chainsaw uh, for work. If uh, you saw that this section was maybe causing a little bit of debris and it wasn't uh, sliding smoothly, then you would have to then completely remove these nuts to get to the underneath the cover and see what's uh, what's causing the debris uh, to make the chain stuck. So like we said there, there's a bolt in the middle, which is one that you use to adjust the chainsaw tension for the, for the blade. This do clockwise to make it tighter or counterclockwise to uh, loosen it. So we'll move on now to the markers. You use this line here to basically mark the distance of the chainsaw as you're adjusting it. As it starts going outward, you'll know basically how much that you you uh, you tighten it. That way you can basically go by uh, some kind of a, a degree that you know how much you're tightening as, you, uh, as you're moving the chamber outwards. Um, as we expose this, and as you see here in the slide, there's a cover that would come off. If you were to remove these two nuts, it would take the cover off completely. If you did have something that was in the chain or uh, prohibiting the chain from sliding smoothly, you would be able to expose the clutch. And in this section here, you'll see the clutch has the chain going around it. It's the clutch so spin freely. And as the engine revs up, it catches the clutch and will spin the chain around the chain bar. The, chain, uh, the chainsaw on the bottom has two anti-kickback bars. It has one that's facing backwards and one that's facing forward. This way, if you're cutting uh, material, cutting wood, if the chain was to catch the wood and it is able to pull the chainsaw towards the material, that would prevent it from going further than it, than it, uh, than it needs to once it catches on the, on the anti-kick bar. So you wanna make sure that those, there's one facing forward and one facing back and that they're tight and they're not loose in any way. If we go over to the other side of the chainsaw, if you're having issues with the chainsaw, you're pulling it and it has uh, the coil is not returned correctly all the way back inside, you will remove this cover. In there, you would find the flywheel and uh, magneto. Um, this is what causes the spark for the chainsaw to start. So if you have debris or anything in there you have to look at, you would just inspect it, put it back together, and it should work accordingly after that. So inside the chainsaw fuel tank, which is over here in the back, you have a, uh, a fuel pickup. So you would remove the, the cap. This chainsaw takes 50 to one oil mix. You doesn't use regular fuel, it's fuel mixed with oil. So that, that way it can, uh, it can uh, lubricate as it's burning fuel. So you would take out that fuel pickup as you see here. It should be clear, uh, no gunk or anything because of the oil, oil fuel mixture. So you would inspect that, make sure everything is good, put it back inside, fill it up with fuel, and your chainsaw should be good to go. The next thing we'll look at is on the other side of the chainsaw. You have uh, three holes. There's uh, the idle screw, there's the high mixture, and the low mixture. 
So the way you would adjust these is after you start the chainsaw, you would go full throttle, adjust the high end screw until the chainsaw sounds like it's working uh, evenly. Then you would let it go. You would adjust the low end idle. And usually after that, the chainsaw should be working smoothly. So you would adjust those uh, accordingly in the morning when you do their, your checkout. So the last thing, one of the last things you wanna check out is also the, the air intake. There's a cover in the back that you would unscrew here and it would expose the air filter intake. With this, you wanna basically make sure that the, the element is not torn or it doesn't have anything that's uh, in, impeding on any air that goes into the, the chainsaw. So you wanna make sure it's all clear. You put the cover back on and now we'll perform the actual start. To start the chainsaw, you have uh, the choke lever back here. So you have the off position, which would be all the way up. You would go to the full choke position, which is all the way down. You would hold the bottom lever on the trigger. It's got a safety mechanism for so both have to be pressed. And you would actually start to uh, give a pull on the chainsaw. The next one would be moving it to the partial choke. You'd give another pull on this one. And the chainsaw would start on this, on this point. And then after the chainsaw would start, you would go to the run position, which is the one up top marked right before the off. Once the chainsaw is on and running, you would go through all the, the checks we had just said, make sure it throttles up, it doesn't need any adjustment. If everything's fine on the chainsaw, you would then turn it off and have it ready for, for uh, service. Here we always say you always wanna know your equipment, be aware of its condition, and know your equipment's capability. Know uh, if something needs to be checked on the equipment, this is the, the moment to do it so that it's always ready for operation when, uh, when you're ready to use it. So. This would be the end of my presentation. If you have any uh, questions, now would be a good time to ask.